Do you have a paranormal encounter you'd like to share with us? Send us an email with your story for a chance of it being featured on Weird World. Venture into four more captivating true tales of time slip accounts where the ordinary meets the extraordinary. Traverse foggy German forests with historic visions of a world at war, hear of time-defying mysteries in an old Ohio town, witness a church out of time in Missouri, and explore a window into a classical scene in northern England. These real-life accounts challenge our very perceptions of time and reality. Soldiers in the Fog In 2003, Terry Matheson was camping alone in the woods of western Germany, close to the French border. After hiking an old road for several miles, he discovered an old German World War II bunker. This wasn't an uncommon sight in this particular region. Although its top was caved in, the walls remained firm and intact. Terry clambered around it, peering inside. It seemed vacant, prompting him to explore its two rooms. The bunker was more like a reinforced guard shack than a fortress. As darkness approached and an uneasy feeling crept over Terry, he decided to camp at a spot nearby rather than inside the bunker. He set up his tent, kindled a small fire and enjoyed a meal. With dinner done, Terry relaxed, listening to the gentle sounds of the forest and absorbing nature's charm. As the fire dwindled to mere embers, emitting light only when gazed upon directly, the stars shone down from the breaks in the forest canopy. The night was profoundly still, and Terry eventually succumbed to sleep by the fire's side. Sometime later, Terry was roused from his sleep. A dense fog had settled, limiting his visibility to a mere 20 feet or so. He struggled to discern what had awakened him until he caught the distant sounds of laughter and chatter. The typical kind of banter you'd hear from friends around a campfire, he thought. Terry Matheson strained his ears, but the voices were too distant and his grasp on the German language wasn't strong enough for him to discern their conversation. Yet it seemed to emanate from the bunker. He suspected that the location might be a popular hangout spot, so Terry decided to venture closer, thinking he might introduce himself and possibly make some new friends. Navigating carefully through the enveloping fog, he descended the hill towards the rear of the bunker. The sounds of laughter intensified, and soon he could discern the flickering glow of what seemed to be kerosene lamps. However, just as he prepared to announce his presence, Terry noticed something odd. The previously caved-in roof of the bunker was now intact, and the figures dancing in the light appeared to be clad in grey uniforms. He froze, observing them for several minutes as they played cards and joked around. The attire was unmistakably that of German SS soldiers. Swiftly and silently, Terry retreated back to his camp. The fire had long been extinguished. For hours, he lay awake, listening to their distant conversations. But as the fog started to lift, the voices dwindled and then eventually vanished. Come morning, when Terry gazed down the hill towards the bunker, its roof was caved in once again. No traces of the previous night's activity remained. He pondered if it was a mere trick of his mind, or perhaps a group of German SS reenactors, which he knew was prohibited in Germany. But deep down, he didn't believe this to be the case. Terry was convinced that the fog had momentarily unveiled a window to the past, revealing an obscure checkpoint on a forested road leading into France, where several SS soldiers spent a cheerful evening keeping watch for any vehicles that might pass. The Farmer in 1987, an old co-worker shared a story with Jacob Mitchell during a graveyard shift at a factory. During those long 12-hour night shifts, having a good partner to chat with was crucial for passing the time. 
Jacob particularly enjoyed being paired up with this co-worker as he felt they could both hold an interesting conversation. Despite their age difference, Jacob being in his late 20s and the co-worker in his 50s, they bonded well. Curious about any unusual experiences the older man might have had, Jacob asked him if he'd ever had any paranormal encounters. The co-worker's response was an astonishing tale, one so fantastical that Jacob sometimes wondered if it might have been lifted from an episode of Amazing Stories. He recounted the experience as follows. There was a very old town in Ohio, surrounded by vast, untamed forests. Few structures stood in the area, save for the occasional farmhouse. Whenever the co-worker visited, he noticed anomalies like his watch malfunctioning, his compass going haywire, or unexplained bouts of missing time. On one particular trip, he and a friend went hunting in these woods. They spent the entire day without much success, and as they were making their way back, they encountered a man in his 30s driving a tractor on a dirt road. The man, with the unmistakable air of a farmer, questioned their presence, pointing out that it was private land that they were hunting on. After a brief chat, during which they apologised, the farmer warmed up to them. He advised that if anyone ever confronted them during future visits, they should just drop his name to avoid any issues. Fast forward a couple of years, the co-worker and his friend returned to the same forest for another hunting expedition. This time they were approached by a younger man on a riding mower. Assuming he was related to the older farmer, they mentioned that they had the older man's permission to hunt there. The young man looked at them sceptically and asked, You're saying, farmer man gave you permission a couple of years ago? They nodded in affirmation and recounted their previous encounter. The young man, wearing a perplexed expression, gestured for them to follow him to a nearby old farmhouse. Inside, an elderly man lay in a hospital-type bed in the living room, attentively watching television and connected to an oxygen tank. The younger man addressed him, saying, Grandad, these men claim you spoke with them a couple of years ago and granted them permission to hunt. Gazing at the co-worker and his friend, the elderly man's eyes widened in recognition. I remember you too, he remarked, astonishment evident in his tone. You haven't aged a day. The pair found the situation eerie, to say the least. After some conversation, they eventually left the farmhouse, vowing never to return. The mystery they faced was how the elderly man, appearing to be in his 90s, could be the same individual they had encountered in his 30s just two years prior. The theory they settled upon was that this particular region of Ohio harboured some distortion in the fabric of time, but that they would never know for sure. Church Apparition The following incident took place in 2008, but Laurie Williams could never shake it from her memory. It would resurface in her thoughts from time to time, urging her to ponder the baffling nature of what took place. Laurie and her husband were contemplating moving further from the city than where they were currently living, about 45 minutes west of St. Louis, Missouri. Their search led them to a town named Rosebud, just outside Union, Missouri, where they had booked to inspect a house on a large expanse of land. After their inspection of the property, they decided to embark on an exploratory drive around the area, keen to get a feel of the neighbourhood. The terrain was mostly rural, with gravel roads branching off Highway 50. They navigated one road after another, losing themselves in the scenic beauty of the countryside. At some point, they came across a dilapidated gravel road that demanded a careful, slow drive. Along the way, an abandoned church appeared right next to the road. With their vehicle crawling past, they observed its details. The structure was devoid of windows, its paint had entirely worn off, and while the bell tower remained, the bell itself was absent. 
Peeking through, they noticed old pews, an unexpected sight given the state of the church. The atmosphere in their car remained silent as they continued to pass the historic structure. Inside, Laurie mourned the decay of such a beautiful old building, assuming her husband Charlie harboured similar sentiments. To her astonishment, he broke the silence, asking, What do you think they were doing in there? Confused, Laurie questioned him for clarity. To Laurie's utter bewilderment, Charlie described seeing the church filled with people, either staring ahead or bowing their heads. In stark contrast, Laurie had seen nothing of the sort. After a perplexed chit-chat and exchange of mutual disbelief, Laurie proposed they turn back for a second look. But what ensued next was even more mystifying. As they retraced their path, the church was nowhere to be found. Doubting their sense of direction, they wondered if they hadn't driven far enough or perhaps had overshot the location. Yet the exact spot where the church stood was now just a patch of rocky grass, evidently undisturbed for ages. The couple occasionally revisits the baffling experience and have resigned themselves to the fact that a logical explanation will likely never be reached. The Phantom Field This incident was experienced by Tara Jennings and her younger sister in Thirsk, north of England, around 2002. They were parked in a sports centre's car park when their mother stepped out of the vehicle to inquire about the pool's opening hours. Seated in the car, Tara, then about 12, and her sister, roughly 10, spotted a peculiarly dressed man crossing an adjacent field. They found his attire and demeanour comical and ridiculous. He wore a top hat, knee-high boots and gave off an air of pride as he strolled along with a cane. Accompanying him was a small black dog. The sisters giggled at the sight. That was until they noticed something startlingly peculiar. As they continued to watch, the dog appeared to vanish into a hedge in the midst of the field. They waited, expecting it to emerge on the other side. Their amusement turned to astonishment when the man followed the dog into the hedge and likewise disappeared without re-emerging. The two continued to chat and mess around, waiting for their mother's return. When she finally approached the car, the girls excitedly recounted the bizarre spectacle of the man and his dog. However, as they pointed towards the field to illustrate what they had just seen, they were stunned to find that the open field they had observed was now a dense woodland area. No trace remained of the field, the hedge, the man or the dog. The car and the car park, however, remained untouched. To this day, the enigma of the man, the dog and the disappearing field continues to baffle Tara and her sister.